Welcome back. In this second video of chapter three, I want to look at this idea of a rectangle rotating in a P5JS sketch and think about it in terms of angular motion. What do I mean by that? Well, you might recall I spent all this time in chapters one and two talking about this idea of motion, right? And vectors. There is a position vector. It is a position in a canvas relative to maybe the orig origin point. There is a velocity vector. The velocity vector is a vector that when applied to position gives instructions for where the position should move to in the next unit of time. So velocity moving this dot from here to there. And then acceleration is the change in velocity. If the velocity, if the object is going to turn or slow down or speed up, that's an acceleration. So maybe it's turning here and then it gets to be, we have this new velocity vector gets to here. This is represented as position dot add velocity, velocity dot add acceleration. We had to do all this extra work to sort of figure out how we would manage all this data, manipulate it, because these were vectors. Well, I want to do exactly the same thing with angles, but in this sort of funny way, we're going to make it much simpler. We're backing up to our life before vectors when we just use scalar quantities, because angle is a scalar value. It's one number. It's a single value. Maybe it starts at zero. Then I might have an angular velocity, whatever that might be, and an angular acceleration, whatever that might be. And I don't know what makes sense to call these variables, um, but I think angle, angular, angle velocity, angle A for angular acceleration, that's going to work. So this is what I want to first start with and add to this sketch over here. Back to the sketch, I'm going to add a variable for angular velocity. I'm going to add a variable for angular acceleration. Then I'm going to, instead of having this hard coded to change by 0.05, I'm going to have the angle change by angular velocity and the angular velocity change by the angular acceleration. And when I run the sketch, we can see if those values are zero, the rectangle is not spinning. It's not rotating. There's no angular velocity or acceleration. I could give it a little angular velocity, like 0.4, and we can see, oh, it's spinning. Actually, that's quite a high value, 0.2. It's spinning rather fast, again, in the clockwise direction. If the angular velocity is negative 0.2, it's going to then spin in the counterclockwise direction. So, but it's spinning, it's rotating at a constant angular velocity, at a constant rate. So let's look at what happens when I introduce the idea of angular acceleration. I'm going to use a very small number, 0.01 and see what happens. We can see it's quickly speeding up over time. And now, it's, a, it's cumulative. That angular acceleration, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, is being added and added and added to that angular velocity. So it's spinning out of control. The frame rate can't keep up. It's actually creating some kind of like unique, uh, pretty interesting artifact, visual artifacts. But more likely, maybe to demonstrate this, I'm going to like give it an even smaller number so we can sort of see it's speeding up over time. The first thing that I might want to try to do with this is just map that, uh, have that angular acceleration be variable. Maybe I can map it to the mouse position or some other parameter so that I can, it feels like I can apply a force, like I'm pushing it to spin further, I'm pulling it back to slow down, go in the other direction, et cetera. So let's, in, to, in draw, I'm going to say angular acceleration. I'm going to map just the mouse x position, which goes between 0 and width, to some value between negative 0.01 and 0.01. I'm going to restart the sketch. If I could get the mouse in the middle, <laughs> right, we can see here that the uh, amount of acceleration is very, very, very little. And as I push it over to the right, it's going to cause it to accelerate really fast. But I can push it over to the left, which is a force going in that's going to slow down and move backwards. So you can sort of see how I'm able to interact with it. Um, and again, these numbers are still quite large, but I can almost like move back and forth and get a little bit of like a seesaw-like effect. It might make sense to put some artificial constraints here. So I might be able to say something like constrain angle velocity between negative 0 0.5 you know, and 0 0.5. Those are still pretty high numbers. And let me actually make this a little bit lower <laughs> just to emphasize that. We can see that it's going to max out at a certain amount. I might also suggest as an exercise, could you do something where you when you click the mouse, you grab the rectangle. You can spin it manually by moving the mouse around. And then could you drag and release it as if you're like throwing it off in a given direction, spinning a wheel, so to speak, that might slow down and stop. That would be a great exercise to do. I'll provide a solution for that in the description of this video as well. 
I'd also like to take a look back at the gravitational attraction example from the end of chapter two. So here there's an array of mover objects, each with this motion algorithm of position, velocity, and acceleration. What happens if we add this concept of angular motion to these objects? So for example, if I were to add variables like this dot angle equals zero, this dot angle v equals 0.01, and let me just add all three of them as zero right now. I'm also going to need to add the translate function to the show function of these mover objects because I want to rotate them each around their centers. Oh, and I, I'm like wondering why it's like acting so strange. I also need push and pop so that the translation and ro ultimate rotation of each mover is self-contained and doesn't affect the other ones. Once again, that's explained in more detail in my P5JS transformations videos. Now, even though I could add rotate by this dot angle, <laughs> I'm not, even if, there, if it was rotated, I'm not going to see anything because these are circles and rotating a circle, I won't be able to see any rotation. So there's a lot of things I could try. I could make them rectangles. For right now, let me just add a line to them. And now you can see there's a little line in each of them that's pointing from the center to the outer edge. I could try to add like a ring around them as if they're planets, or maybe add moons around them that rotate. There's so many like interesting possibilities, but I'm just going to leave it something simple like that. And then what would happen now if I were to add in some angular velocity? Well, first of all, I need to add the algorithm for angular motion in the update, update function. So that should be... So just like I have uh, acceleration into velocity, velocity into position, I have angular acceleration into angular velocity and angular velocity into the actual angle itself. So let's now give them just all an arbitrary small angular velocity. And we can see they are all now rotating exactly the same speed in the same direction. How about I try setting the angular acceleration equal to a value related to its actual acceleration itself. So maybe I'll just use the x value for right now. I'm sitting here wondering why nothing has changed. I realize I put this right after I set the acceleration back to zero, which is what happens at the end of every frame. So this should really happen now at the very end of update. Now I have a few things going on. I have the algorithm to update velocity and position, as well as the algorithm to update angular velocity and angle. Um, and then right in between, I'm going to set the angle acceleration very arbitrarily to the acceleration's x value, and then at the very end, reset the acceleration values back to zero. Um, let's run the sketch again, and we can see, okay, there are things that are spinning. Now, they're kind of spinning super out of control because that x value of the, of the acceleration is quite high. Let's try something like just dividing it by 50. And we can see there's a certain quality now to how these objects rotate as they move about the canvas itself. Now, is it a realistic simulation? Is there some actual like thing that I'm modeling here in terms of how an object might actually spin as it's moving? Not even remotely close. But I am experimenting visually here, and if I were to have objects that were drawn in a different way, maybe leaving trails, there's a lot of, I think, sort of visual uh, possibilities that might come out of even something as arbitrary as just setting the angular acceleration to the acceleration's x value. But you know, there's no reason why I couldn't have made this the y value, or some other aspect of the system, or it's the velocity itself, or where it is on the screen, or what color it is. There's so many possibilities there. So this I would also really encourage you to explore. What are some ways that you can control um, and calculate angular motion for an object that's in whatever system you've built, whether it's gravitational attraction. You know, if you had something that's more realistic, like, you know, a game where you were trying to throw a ball through a hoop, like as you throw it, which way would it spin? How would it spin? How might it slow down or speed up in its spinning? So I hope you try out some of these ideas. Please share them with me. Uh, find the link to where you can share them in the video's description. And I will see you in the next video where I will be talking about Okay, I remembered. In the next video, I'm going to start looking at the trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent um, a bit more with more specifics and see how those can be applied to various examples in P5JS themselves. Okay, so see you there and have a good day.